It's got four wheel drive and a lift gate, but this ain't no SUV. This is the 2014 BMW 328i xDrive Sports Wagon. BMW's new 328i is one of only a handful of wagons you can buy in the US today. Americans just don't seem to like wagons, even more so than hatchbacks. But let me tell you why wagons are great. So following the wagon tradition, this BMW sports wagon is built on the 3 Series platform, and that's the same thing they built the M3 on, which has legendary performance. So of course, this car is going to benefit from that, it's going to have great handling. So now at the same time, we've got all this cargo space back here. This uh, wagon with the rear seats down can hold 53 cubic feet. So wagons are a great blend of practicality and performance. Now BMW only sells this uh, sports wagon as the 328i or the 328d, which is the diesel model. Now that means both only come with four cylinder engines and xDrive is also standard on this model. That means it's got all wheel drive. Now let's go take a look under the hood. Now under the hood here, we have the latest example of BMW's two liter four cylinder engine. They use this engine in everything from the one series coupe to the X3 SUV, all the way up to the five series sedan. Now this engine has some great technologies in it. It's got a twin scroll turbocharger, which cuts down on turbo lag by having the exhaust gases from cylinders one through three spin one scroll, and the exhaust gases from cylinders two through four spin the other scroll. All that gives it more power too. BMW also uses direct injection on this, so that sprays fuel directly into the cylinders, giving it a more complete burn. That contributes to efficiency. All this technology helps this engine put out 240 horsepower, 255 pound-feet of torque. For efficiency, this engine does 22 miles per gallon city, 33 miles per gallon EPA rating. Now let's check the cabin tech. BMW has all sorts of great tech features for the 328i. You can get adaptive cruise control, automatic parallel parking, even a head-up display which will show your speed and some navigation information on the windshield right in front of your eyes. Uh, this car doesn't have any of that. BMW sent us a totally stripped down version, no cabin tech options at all, so this is as base as you get. Even as base as you get though, you do get this screen here, this LCD up here, which uh, without the navigation option shows you the stereo stuff and the telephone and all that. So if I use this iDrive controller down here and go to the telephone menu, I've got an iPhone paired up to this thing so I can see my, my phone book and I can dial numbers using this uh, iDrive controller. Go back to the main menu and I've got my uh, radio uh, item here and that'll give me uh, AM, FM HD, but it won't give me satellite radio because that's an option. In the console here, I've also got this Y adapter. It's got a 30 pin uh, iPhone connector on the, this side and then also an aux input and a USB port here. It's kind of old style, I hate these things because they don't work with the newer uh, iOS devices. They don't have the lightning connector, so you actually have to use another adapter on top of that. And the sound quality really starts to suffer with that. So I'm really surprised BMW still uses this on a 2014 model. Now I could also get some app integration here, play online sources like Pandora and Mog and stuff like that, and even see Facebook and Twitter updates on the screen here. But uh, that's an option, not in this car. See a trend here? On the console, I've got the shifter. This is the standard BMW shifter for their automatic transmission. This is an eight-speed automatic. Uh, it's got the standard uh, push forward for reverse, pull back for drive, push it to the side for uh, manual mode and uh, the sport gate. And next to it, I've got this uh, rocker switch, which takes me through the different drive modes. I've got uh, Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. Now, if I move it down to Eco Pro, that's going to get me the best mileage. I can actually set some of the parameters for that on the screen here. Now climate control is going to be a big suck on your fuel economy, so this will actually detune the climate control a bit. If you can get away with it, it's a nice way to uh, get yourself a few more miles per gallon. This car actually has the dy dynamic handling package, so that means it's got an adaptive suspension. So I can choose whether to uh, have the chassis go into sport mode and the drivetrain go into sport mode, or have them both. Of course I'm going to have them go onto both uh, sport mode for drivetrain and chassis. So right now I'm in Eco Pro mode and I pulled up to a stop, put the brakes on, foot brake on, stopped, and the engine shut down. That's the idle stop feature that they have on this car to save you gas in the city. So as soon as I lift off the brake pedal, the engine kind of coughs and picks up again. But now I uh, flip the rocker switch to sport mode and suddenly the throttle gets 
a lot more sensitive. Even just holding the throttle steady and switching it to sport mode, I suddenly feel this little burst of power here because uh, the car is letting me get away with more with this throttle, letting, letting me do more with it. So yeah, I really like that uh, adaptive suspension because this, I feel, makes the car become more like what I expect of BMW. Also, of course, got the eight-speed uh, automatic transmission and to complete the whole sport mode settings, I might want to throw this over into the sport gate. It's not a super aggressive sport mode I've found. It's, it's okay, it'll definitely keep the engine speed up a little more, especially when you drive it hard and you really press down. And of course, I've also got the transmission in its sport mode right now, but I can also use the paddles to uh, on the wheel here to shift it manually. You know, there's a little bit of automatic transmission torque converter lag, but uh, generally, it's pretty good. The best thing I've found about this car that I like, this has electrically boosted power steering, and I really like the, the heft of the wheel. The wheel's got really good weight and really good response. I like that part of it, and I think you know that's gonna be your sort of rubber meets the road part of the car when you're driving it. You're really gonna feel that and notice that is the essential BMW-ness of the car. Now, obviously, I like wagons, and I've been a BMW fan for years but I'm not crazy about some of the stuff the company's been doing lately. They've kind of instituted sort of a, a pay-to-play model. Now with this uh, 2014 328i sports wagon, its base price is $41,450. Fortunately, this one came with that $1,000 dynamic handling package. That gets you the adaptive suspension and also the sport steering system that helps the handling quite a bit too. This car also has an M Sports package. That's $3,850. That adds a few handling features, a few sports stuff, but also a lot of cosmetic stuff. I don't know if I'd get that. So let's start over with this car. To do it up CNET style, well, I first would definitely still have the dynamic handling package. I'd also add the technology package. That's $3,150, and that gets you the voice command, the app integration, even the navigation system. So that'll give you a lot of the cabin tech that you want. I'd also add the uh, driver assistance package, which gets you a rear view camera. That's $950, kind of pricey, but good to have. And on top of that, I'd also add the Harman Kardon audio system, $850. That's gonna make the stereo sound quite a bit better. And finally, uh, for those long highway trips, I'd add adaptive cruise control. That's $1,200 option. So all in, we're just over $51,000. Still kind of pricey, but this car is gonna feel like a BMW and it's gonna have CNET style technology.